A very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on the Tuesday edition of the show. The very first one for the week. We promise to make it worth your while. From the city of Lagos, I'm Yemi Adebayo. Well, today is a special day. Uh, we're doing the post-mortem of uh, the semi-final of the West Women's African Cup of Nations, I almost said West Africa, Women's African Cup of Nations, Nigeria, Super Falcons, gave all they had, wasn't enough. Uh, but of course, it was a performance a lot of, a lot of us can be proud of, reminds us of uh, the Nigerian spirit. We'll talk about that game uh, on the show tonight and the way forward. We'll also uh, take a look at uh, the Nigeria uh, Professional Football League. They just concluded the season. Uh, the teams uh, that have been relegated, the teams that have... Uh, uh, of course, won the title, the ones that are going on the continent. We'll talk about all of them and all the drama that ensued. We will, as we move on, also talk about uh, amputee football, uh, which is one of the things that we get our attention on the show tonight. And tonight we have uh, a lot of um, contributors to uh, the show. They will be giving us their thoughts on all of these things that I've uh, highlighted, talking about women's football, uh, talking about the Nigeria Professional Football League, uh, and talking about um, special sports. Uh, that's the outlook of uh, the show tonight. We urge you to sit back, relax, as we uh, take you on a trip across the money-spinning world of sports this lovely Tuesday evening. Let me, uh, of course, I usually don't do this alone. At some point, my colleague, Austin Okona Akpan will join in. While we're waiting for him, let me quickly introduce uh, the contributors on the show, our partners uh, tonight on the show. Let me start with the guy sitting right next to me in the Lagos studio. Kane Idris joins me. Kane Idris, uh, greetings to you. We've not had time to talk about uh, the Super Falcons. We didn't do that before we come yeah, yeah. came into this. So usually that's our practice. Exactly. Uh, so I'll be hearing whatever you're saying for the first time as the viewers <laughs> are hearing it. But uh, greetings to you, Kane. Thanks for being here tonight. It's good to be here. It's been um, about two weeks. I had us. Um, uh, I've not been here for that while. So <laughs> a bit kind of sad that I'm here on a day after the Super Falcons have lost. But it always feels good to be on sports tonight. All right. That's a good one. Okay, so let's move on. Let's uh, go to Oshogbo and also uh, bring in our friend Joseph Atewe joins us tonight on the show. Greetings to you, Joseph. Thanks for finding our time to be with us on the show tonight. Yeah, good evening to you, Yemi. Good evening to Idris in the studio and, of course, to um, everyone watching this evening. It feels great uh, to join this evening and I can't wait uh, to talk all the, all the Super Falcons. Uh, very impressive they were throughout the competition except the first game. Uh, but we'll talk about that. It feels great to be here. All right. Thank you very much. Also, uh, with us on the show tonight, hopefully he's ready to join us. Also with us, Aikoje Ojekere, the CEO of Match Room Sports and Media Limited. Greetings to you, Aikoje. Thanks for finding out time to be with us on the show tonight. Yeah, good evening. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me tonight. All right, so that sets the, the tone for uh, what we're going to be doing on the show tonight. Uh, deliberately, we have decided not to start with the Super uh, Falcons of Nigeria because if we do that, we'll probably devote the whole show to the Super Falcons. But first, let's start with the just concluded Nigeria Professional Football League, uh, the 2020. 2021-2022 season uh, that just uh, ended. And let's look at... Um, all of the things that happened. I think first, let's take a look at the final day uh, results and we'll take it uh, from there. Let's see the final day results in the Nigeria Professional Football League. It's right there on your screen. Let me blaze through it. I'll uh, get our coaches' thoughts. Uh, Abia Warriors uh, beat Lobisa's 3 deal. Happened over the weekend. Uh, the Kada FC uh, defeated Sunshine Stars 3 deal. Uh, of course, Rangers International beat Aqua. United 2 0. Heartland uh, beats uh, their opponents. That score United 1 0 wasn't enough to save them anyway. Rebel Stars, of course, the surprise package of this season's uh, professional football league, defeated Niger Tornadoes 3 0. Rivers United, uh, of course, they won the title before then, so it was just for uh, uh, presentation and all that. Defeated Gobe United 1 0. MFM lost the final game. Wouldn't have counted for much anyway. Lost to. That's why United, Cardo Pillars, and Shooting 
stars. Of course, this was a game that usually uh, would have been celebrated uh, before the negative headlines surrounding Carlo Pillars. They won 2-1, uh, yet was it enough to save them. Wiki Torres also defeated Casino United 2-0 and Plateau United defeated the Aba Elephants. That's talking about a Yimba. So that's, uh, those are the results for the final day of the season, March day uh, 38. All right, uh, let me, uh, of course, allow in my colleague, he appears he's ready now, Austin Okon Akpad, uh, he joins us. We're, got, we're all going to have uh, a lot of uh, deliberations, a lot of things that happen. Greetings to you, Austin. Thanks for finally making it to the show. What a day uh, to talk sports. All the greetings to you, Yemi, and of course, our viewers joining us from different parts of the world. Yes, it's still a beautiful, interesting, exciting morning spinning action packed world of sports. Listening to you talk about the MPFL, what a season! Rivers United should support. Primacy, you know, they showed that they were dominant. They showed that they wanted a league title and they got it. Play to United, they can go back and say to themselves that it wasn't a bad season, but Remo Stars, what a story. Talk about you reaping whatever you sow. Remo Stars got into the league with so much preparation, with good management, with good support, and they're going to the continent. All right, so that's how... It all turned out. Um, I'm interested in listening to our coach, J.O.J. Curry. Let me start with him. I mean, your thoughts on the just concluded uh, season. I, I think I listened to you a few times before uh, the season started. Uh, and, and I'm tempted to ask, did, did everything go according to script for you? For instance, were you surprised with what <laughs> Real Monsters was uh, able to ach achieve? Did you ever imagine that? For instance, Carlo Pillars would be uh, in the kind of situation they were. Well, um, <clears throat> thanks again. It, it didn't go the way I, I, I thought it would be. I planned or I, I um, envisaged. Uh, of course, I, I wouldn't have um, believed that um, Remo finished um, third position. Um, again, I, I knew they weren't going to go down. Um, considering the way, I mean, my good friend and um, Daniel Ogumo, they, they did a fantastic job with that team. Um, you know, work with them, most of the players um, in the in the lower division, and of course their youth team. You know, so at the point it was the team was handed over to uh, Benga um, Ogumbot uh, again, another friend. Um, it was obvious that like he was going to do something different. Right? And at the point, they, they, they got it right when they brought in certain players. They brought in Daya uh, Daya Ojo. They brought in Sikiro Alimi. You know, and you look at the season number of goals Sikiro scored. You are agreeing that. That, that was just, um, yeah, I mean, it was like a plane that was um, taking off at the right time, of course, and landing to Super Rema was a, Then again, their facility. When you have good facility, you will play fantastic football. So credit to um, Honorable Kunle Shuname for getting that facility together. When, when you have that facility, you want to play good football, you will be forced to play good football. You will have the right set of players. Like I said, it came together from the lower rank, from the junior team. The Gauteng Benga, Okumbate. Who doesn't coach players who like this? But then he was able to get it right. Of course, then the addition of Daya Ojo and um, Sikiro Alimi all worked well. Again, um, I didn't believe Pillar was going to go down. But along the, at the course of the season, I said it's Sheriff Rally that um, the team I was seeing from Kano is not Kano Pillars, but Kano Pillar. And Kano Pillar <laughs> cannot do what Kano Pillars has been doing. So, no surprise to me, they eventually went down. I said it consistent that this team. I mean, imagine, imagine Pillars couldn't beat teams like Gombe and Wiki away, Katsina. But when, you, when you add all those points together for, for, for Pillars, that's like nine points. Then you home and away, that's 18 points. Gombe home and away, uh, Wiki home and away, Katsina home and away. Those were like, um, um, what, 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 what Jam used to call that? Uh, I've forgotten what Jam used to call that. You know, you just pick all that. It, it didn't happen this season. I mean, they even they drew at home with um, Gombe, drew at home with Wiki. They went away, they lost to all those teams. You know, so when 18 points thrown, so where will Pilas get the points from? You know, they're coming down south again when they come this way. They have played at places also big points. You just know that Pilas would do the job and do it well. But they couldn't do it. They were just struggling. I mean, they had only Rabia, like I said. They had the pillar, Rabia Ali. Rabia couldn't do all alone. Um, they allow several players to leave. You don't do that if, if for a big team like Kano Pillars. I mean, you, I, I look at Kano Pillars now, and it's, you know, in my head, I'm just seeing the rise and fall of Kano Pillars. You know, it's simple. 
Then um, again for Rivers United and Iguma, Iguma won the league for the last time in 2011 when it was with Dolphin. Then Dolphin was still existing. So at 2011 plus another 11 years, 22, you know, winning it now for Rivers United, a new team. Honestly, credit to them uh, from 2016. Um, somehow, I want to um, believe that Governor Wicke did the right thing. Back then, when he when he merged them, Sharks and Dolphins, to some people, it wasn't a good decision. But now, they've won the league. So that's the right thing to do. And, and when you look at over time, too, um, last season, they were, they were, they were you know, for top three. The season before, they were top three. Again, this time around, they got it right. Again, they brought in certain players. Man of the moment, uh, man of the season for me, uh, Chijoki Akuneto came in. They got in the with Dura left back. Ube was fantastic. A player I believe should be in the national team. Um, I will even do better. That's my opinion. And I think um, Ube deserves to be there. You look at the back four, they brought in a goalkeeper from relegated Jigawa Golden Stars, um, Tsuchuma Victor. He did, you know, had a fantastic team up front. Ishak, you know, from, 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 from um, being a bench player, became a regular. They brought in um, Yuma, Yuma Wagwe from Kano Pillars. So you begin to understand why Pillars didn't do well. If the likes of um, Yuma could leave, then Rivers again goes another defender from Kano Pillars, the Cameroonian. Um, then it's Kadian. You know, you look at those two leaving Kano Pillars, and, and Pillars, of course, can't get, can't, are not able to get a right replacement uh, with trouble. But talking about Rivers United, two players scored um, 35 goals. Um, Akunejo scored 19, um, um, Isha scored 16, together 35 goals. <laughs> Let me tell you this part. I mean, four teams didn't even score as much as 35. MFM wow. scored 26, Kanu Pillar scored 32, um, Hartland scored 32 goals, Casina scored 34. So these four teams didn't even score as much goals as two players. Uh, Chijoki Akunejo, the top scorer, and of course, um, 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 Isha. So when you're not scoring, what will be the next thing? Israel relegation. So it's not surprised that this quartet, MFM, Canopilla, Allen and Kassina, all got relegated. I mean, you can imagine Canopilla scoring 32 goals in a season. It's, it's, it's a, it just summarizes the problem of Canopilla for you. Then you go into the, the crowd violence again and you lose six points. When you lose six points, what does you want to do? What, what, what do you want? Let them give Pilla six points back. Where will they, where will they find them? So, and it, it, it was just a bad season for Canopilla. It was like moving from bad to worse, you know, for them. And no surprise, they are, they are you know, where they are now. But then, uh, you look at teams like Gombe and Wiki. Ordinarily, these are teams that should be struggling, you know, at, at the bottom of the table. But it tells you the kind of work that the coaches there, you know, have done in the last season. Uh, Dogo for Wiki, and of course, uh, Alice Zubero for yeah. uh, Gombe United. Then again, you look at players that are unknown players that they won't use, and got results. After last this you saw for Gombe United was one of the top scorers. It's called 15 goals. So again, you ask yourself, the top scorer in Kano Pillars. I mean, you know, what number number goes the score? That's the game will tell you the problem Pillars had over time. Go All right. It, it was a general problem for Kano Pillars. All right. Uh, thank you for that comprehensive uh, review of what went down last season. It's almost as if I shouldn't ask anybody anything anymore. But, but then again, we'll move on. All right, let me just quickly find you the floor to Austin, who uh, will uh, help us with some reactions to things that happened uh, in the season. Can, can you do this with me? I mean, just give us your overview. Uh, he has said a lot, uh, covered a lot of ground for us. But, I mean... Your overview of last season, how impressed were you? He talked about goal tallies. He talked about inability of some of the teams. He wasn't surprised yeah. about the ones that uh, weren't able to survive the drop. So, I mean, your, your own thoughts on what transpired last season? Uh, I think um, as much as we saw some gray areas, uh, some dark rooms where we want to, you know, uh, get lit uh, right there, the MPFL this season, 2021-2022, served us a lot of surprises. I think since 2012, there about the first time since then that all four promoted clubs didn't get relegated. None. All got survived. The Red Monsters, 3SC, Niger Tornadoes, Gombe, all survived. Showing you that right there when we were reporting how they were performing at the NNL, we are saying these teams are good but waiting to see how they will perform at the MPFL. Will they bring everything to the MPFL? They did. And look at Remo Stars right there. 
in the top half or talking Gombe in the top half. Niger Tornado survived comfortably and then three SC, you know, by the uh, by the skin of their the, teeth. Yes, skin of their teeth. So it, it, it's um it, it's one angle that I really loved this season. And then the surprises, talking about the drops like MFM, like Cano Pillars, shows that maybe we have gotten to the point where we're seeing light at the end of a lot of tunnels because we have different tunnels in the MPFL case where, you know, some will say uh, match day issues, uh, before match day, after match day, and all of that. If this that happened with Canopy last match day 38, before then, uh, club owners, club chairmen came together and said, if you don't clear the issue of Canopilas and the point deduction and all of that, whether it's to Dakada or Canopilas, we won't play match day 38. And then the pronouncement came on a Friday before, you know, the Sunday that had, you know, uh, the final matches. And the moment that uh, proclaimment came, you know, the news the headlines, dust, the news headlines were just Canopilas relegated and all of that. And that is what we want to see judgments coming as fast as possible and then whether you're the biggest of the biggest to get the hammer it tells it sends a lot of you know stories it sends a lot of uh, a clear, you know, message. clear message to to even smaller clubs and all of that and what can you say about remo stars i think i could you just capped it well if you do the right things, you reap the right seeds. You, you know, uh, if you uh, sow the right seeds, you reap the right fruit. So it is what it is. I, I loved how the MPF yeah. found out this season, but definitely, Yemi, it can get better. And getting better is whatever we do here, All how right. it goes, will tell on the continent. So I want to see Rivers United play to United, uh, you know, Red Monsters okay. and others. All right. Let me give the floor to Austin. I mean, we, 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 we've sell a lot. I'm very sure uh, Austin would like to get um, Joseph Atewes thoughts as well. But, but Austin, a lot, a lot of people have said a lot of things, and I'm very sure you want to chip in with your thoughts and also probably take some uh, reactions as well. Yeah, I just you know, when you look at the season, you you get to respect. You know what? Uh, the Nigeria Professional Football League represents in terms of quality football. We've always said it that we just want administrators to, you know, get up and, and start doing the things that will make it a standard professional football league. You know, Rivers United, what, what they've done just shows you that, look, if you put the right investments into football, it will work, you know. And and for, for the first time in their history, I agree with, with IKOJ when they were when they were merging, you know, for as, as sharks and dolphins, a lot of us were like, "Oh, they were taking this out of, out of um, the, the hands of players." But look at where we are today with it. Uh, pictures from um, the medal presentation ceremony on the final day of the season. Uh, Rivers United are champions of the Nigeria Football um, Professional Football League. But I want us to take a look at the league table before I bring in Joseph Atewa, and if we've got some time. We'll just ask I could you one or two questions before we go on a break. Let's take a look at the look, league table. Guys, when you look at this league table, there's so much information in it. Look at the teams that are relegated. Particularly, we can start talking about Kano Pillars. But for me, the four teams that got promoted from last season survived this season. Tells you uh, that the, the professional football league in the country is actually competitive. So that's a good one. And if you take a look at the table, look at Remo Stars sitting gallantly right there, con qualifying for the continent. Quara United also deserves some mention. They were very good last season, kept that consistency to finish fourth. That's commendable. And then um, the likes of Rangers, you know, just coming uh, very close right there in fifth. Let's bring in Joseph Atewa. We've got just one minute before we go on a quick break. Joseph, good to have you on sports tonight. Uh, what part of the league got you talking? Well, I must say kudos to my big brothers, of course. You guys have said it all. But then I would just point out to some teams, uh, two of them, um, talking about the relegation, well, relegate, relegated teams, rather, and most especially MFM. Um, after five seasons in the Nigeria Professional Football League, they failed to learn from the lessons. And you, you, you recall that side the first season where they had, well, a beautiful season, at some point it took one or two games for them to survive. At some point, one point, the handwriting were on the wall. They always leave it late. And what you've seen this season is that there's improvement in the Nigeria Professional Football League. Uh, so no room for sleeping here. And MFM got it wrong. The normal, the usual practice will be leave it to the second half of the season try to get the job done, uh, survive by the whiskers, remain in the Nigeria Professional Football League. How do you explain losing 19 games? That is terrible. So I'm not surprised that MFM are relegated. And for Kanu Pillars, the handwriting was also on the wall. You recall that in the last three seasons, is it that they are fined? 
uh, for one issue or the other, or their fans uh, will have this unruly behavior. And the three points, I believe, cost them, because if you look do your calculations, if they got in the three points, it'd be 48, 48, 48, and uh, maybe uh, they would have put in extra effort and at least uh, survived. So I'm not surprised MFM well deserve they should go learn their lesson in the NNL, which I believe is tougher than the NPFL. And for Canopilas, I see them bouncing back, but then they will come back stronger. For Rivers United, good one, but then you know the usual practice of sin. A governor comes in likes uh, football, invests so much, they succeed. Mm. If it's off the seats, they collapse again. Okay, we'll get to see if they will learn from previous lessons. Sports tonight on channels television. Let's go on this quick break. When we come back, we'll still got Aikoji. More love for the MPFL. Don't go anywhere. Stay. Welcome back to Sports Tonight on Channels Television. Do you love the Nigeria Professional Football League? If you do, then we invite you to be part of the program. You can talk to us on Twitter or Channels underscore Sports and on Facebook or Channels Life in Sports. Rivers United, they are champions of the Nigeria Professional Football League, winning it for the first time in their history, and they did it in style. We've got Aikoji Aujetiri with us on the show tonight. We've got uh, Joseph Atewe also, and... Kendi Idris is right there in Lagos, my colleague, Yemi Adibel. Let's go to Aikoje. Aikoje was talking about teams that got relegated, from um, that got promoted from last season, all surviving. Is that an indication that the league is competitive? Well, they, 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 not really. The league has always been competitive. I mean, uh, if you say the likes of um, um, Hartland and um, Pillars going down, doesn't mean, mean it's you know, not competitive. Competitive, I, I won't. Um, that that won't be true. The league has always been um, just that. Um, 3SC, um, Remo, uh, Tenor, they all did. Uh, they, they came better prepared. It's all about preparation. No, that's that's the truth. Um, they came better prepared. They had better players, um, coaches. Look at look at MFM. Um, they kept um, you know changing the uh, the demand. The, 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 the coach in the dugout. Same with uh, Arsenal did the same thing. So. When you keep when you keep changing the, the, the personnel, uh, that, 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 that will give you problems. Um, look look at Dremo consistency. Um, Daniel did a job at the NNL. Um, he got um, he moved to the uh, the parent team in Portugal. They got um, Benga Okumbo there. They knew what they wanted. Um, the likes of Unico Junior, young players who came from the junior team, they brought two play. I mean, players also knew. Look, look at the performance of Dio. Dio in the midfield. Um, uh, Sikiru attack. They got Emmanuel Daniel, the former under 20 goalkeeper who was in South Africa sometime in goal. So yeah. you, at some point they had Kyle Day in goal. They had Emmanuel Daniel. Mm -hmm. So remember, was perfect. Everything worked perfectly. Then again, when you play football on a good pitch, Austin, you'll get good results. Sure. Remember sure. had a fantastic, the best pitch. Sure. Uh, maybe after the pitch are in your anyway. We want to come there. But then Remember had a fantastic pitch. No surprise, the players played fantastic football, and no surprise yeah. they finished third on the north. That's right. Uh, let me bring in Joseph, and then we'll take a final one uh, before we leave. Jo Joseph, you 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 were just on and on about MFM, um, but if you take a look at the league table, Aqua United defending champions, I uh, couldn't defend, couldn't retain the title. Are you impressed with with what they did this season? Well, of course, it's the beauty of the Nigeria professional football league. Like, I think only Kano Pillars, I stand corrected, have won that league three times in a row, if I'm correct, um, in the history of the Nigeria professional football league. Like, so it says a lot about it. You see, uh, Maviva United win this season. Picking up the next season might be pretty difficult. And as I said, every season you have these teams come out with better ideas, sign in players. I mean, one of us uh, spoke about Rivers United, uh, bringing up the likes of... Um, all the players that are in the squad and see what they've been able to do for Rivers United. I mean, very competitive. So I'm not surprised Aqua United, but then I'm surprised that Dakada survived. I mean, it shows the, the spirit, the resilience, and of course, how much the players are very committed in ensuring that they remain in the league. As of Aqua United, I'm not surprised that they didn't retain it. My own submission, the Nigeria Professional Football League, it's a, a, a league is a very difficult one. Uh, maybe next season they'll up their game, but then the beauty of it is that they are still in the league. That's right. Let's take some reactions coming from the final day of the league season. The, pres the president of the Nigeria Football Federation, Amadou Pinik, has been responding. 
United. Um, we are truly excited about um, yeah, winning this um, trophy, the league, the championship. But on the part of Nigerian Football Federation, there's a lot we need to do in terms of repositioning the league. You know, we will take some very difficult decisions, some impossible decisions. Um, 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 the, the decisions from club licensing to hooliganism to players welfare even to the leadership of the MPFL you know we need to work with them in ensuring that we take very difficult decisions so that we can build Nigerian league to the level where you see it and appreciate it is exactly what we are going to do uh, I'm happy that I've seen it first time I watched a couple of matches in the course of the season I saw a lot of things that personally that I'm not excited about, but trust me, it's work in progress, I will get it right. So that's it, uh, the president of Nigeria Football Federation, Maju Penix, says it's work in progress, and hopefully we will get it right. The Honorable Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Mr. Sunday Dari, uh, has also been reacting. Let's listen to him. They are not only our Premier League champions, I believe you are continental champions. So we are two caps as the ambassadors of River State and the ambassadors of Nigeria on the continent. So when you go out there, you get support from River State, you get support from the federal government and the entire football loving Nigerians. His Excellency has given you a charge, your best chance and our best hope. We want to make sure that we move up to that continental football level. And I believe that you boys can do it. So let's say the minister giving players of Rivers United a charge when they get to the continent. Uh, yeah, me, let me hand over to you. Let's go to the WAFCOM. But I love that part when the governor announced one million naira each for that win. And the boys scattered. <laughs> yeah, I mean, wild scenes of celebration uh, in that. Uh, yeah, we're, we're going to move to the um, WAFCON, but I think it's only fair. Let's do justice to what the minister said. He said they are continental champions. Okay, hopefully they will be. Uh, but can you do this with me in, in a minute, quickly? How do you think Rivers United should approach their continental assignment? I remember Joseph Atoy has always he said at me that, look, because teams go on the continent, they play more games. That's one of the reasons it thinks why teams are not being able to successfully defend their title. So how do you think they should approach? Probably in a minute. I think Rivers United, um, I have this feeling that they might just be a formidable champion, not just locally, but, you know, on the continent. Because it's been a long time build. It's been like three seasons, four seasons now for Rivers United, being in and around, you know, this space where uh, at a point... They felt they were at dawn, not being in the cha uh, CAF Champions League. They had to fall to the CAF Confederations Cup. So they've had that sniffing of being at this place. And now, not just champion, now you want to go and represent properly. Now, the welfareism that they've gotten, let me use just this season. I think if they go on under pedestal, they will just go on and be better, uh, you know, better representative compared to what we've had in recent times, especially, well in the two especially from our champions. They'll perform well in the two competitions. Whether it's, they are in the Champions League, well, taking that template. Okay. And then, okay, your meaning perform well even yeah. in the MPFL. I'm, I'm having that feeling. Because it, what I meant by it's been a long time coming is the fact that You've always wanted to be here. You've worked so hard and to now be you here. Are here. And now you are here. I think you must have learned a lot of lessons, okay. you know, built up to this time. Right. And right. then you should go on and just display that. Okay, we'll be here. Uh, that's all I can say. We'll be here. But this is Wishing Reverse United. All the best. Of course, if they win, Nigeria wins. And, of course, we all want that. All right, let's move on. Let's go to Morocco. Of course, the semifinal left uh, a sore taste in our mouths uh, yesterday. I mean, you could go on and on. I mean, there were, there were diverse opinions about the performance of the girls, but no one, no one could blame a team playing with nine ladies against 11 for over 40 minutes. I mean, you have to respect the guts it takes, I mean, to keep your opponents at bay. And that's the result, host Morocco, of course, uh, defeated Nigeria 5-4 penalties, game ended 1-1 in regulation time. 
and Zambia and South Africa. I mean, controversies in both games. <laughs> um, of course, the Zambians still protesting this. Uh, I mean, pictures, he appears like... Yeah. I mean, the uh, the infringement was outside of the box. A penalty was given. And even some South African commentators have been saying that Bayana Bayana should not rejoice. That's not the way they wanted their team yeah. to get into the final. We would have taken that if we had that opportunity. <laughs> but anyway, that's, that's what uh, you have. So we're going to do a post-mortem of what happened. Uh, let me just quickly go to Aikoji and uh, get, get his thoughts. I mean, there are... Like I said, diverse opinion. There are those that felt women's football on the continent has improved. So we should not be disappointed with the Falcons. And there are some that have said, even though women's football has improved, our performance was not up to scratch. So, um, I mean, Akoji, I don't know where you stand in the divide and what you think Nigeria should start doing going forward. Well, it's, it's um, mixed fortunes for me. I, I thought we had the first half to, to, um, to kill this game. Uh, we wasted chances in the first half. At some point, the goalkeeper, the, the um, Moroccan goalkeeper, kept um, giving the ball to us. We didn't uh, make use of it. I mean, football, when, when you get your chance, um, when the chances come, you kill them. You get your score. As much as they come, deal with it. Just because you don't know if you're going to come. You don't know what's going to happen in the next minute. The second half came and everything just changed. Um, again, you look at those red cards and you want to ask them, um, deserved them, um, you know, or not. Well, um, we also had, a, I mean, we, there, was, there was a chance, there was a time that um, a Moroccan should have been sent off. Um, yeah. I don't know what yeah. happened to yeah. her at that time and the, the referee. Um, well, when you're playing the host, um, you, you prepare. You prepare for everything. Uh, we, we should have ended this game in 90 minutes. It's painful because... Um, when you look at um, this same team, this was a team we beaten like 8-0, 6-0 uh, back in the days. But again, it's clear and obvious to everyone that Morocco did have, uh, they, they have done their job. They prepared for this tournament. Yeah. Did we yeah. have the same preparation? Well, it, it, it's debatable. Uh, but then at the end of the day, um, who's in the final? Who's going to win the cup? We thought we were talking about the 10th um, title at Decima. Did we prepare for it? We were singing La Decima with them. We shouldn't have known that in matters like this, of course, the ladies are all over the place. Um, it's part of the football culture in North, North Africa. When they're playing other teams, we should have known all this. When, when, you, when you know all this, you prepare. I mean, they, they came prepared for us. It was a full house. You, I mean, you look at the tunnel, you think it's, it's Raja, uh, Casablanca, uh, exactly. Casablanca, Debbie, Raja, and um, Raja and Weda. But no, it was the women playing. They came to support them. They wanted the, the team to win. You won't blame them for coming to support their team. Again, credit to the Moroccans, too. They did a good job. So, um, the truth is this. Um, I don't believe when people say football. If, if Afghan women's football is developing, are we not, what would have happened to our own? We should. I mean, we've been on top. We should develop faster than the others. But it's obvious they were not. And so that's why it looks like they're catching up. They're catching up because they are doing much more than we are doing. Very soon, I mean, our players will be heading for... Uh, they used to go to Scandinavia before. Now it's Spain. They might not travel that far anymore because the Moroccan league is also stepping up. So very soon you see players, our uh, players moving to Morocco to play professional football. And that's the truth. We must, we must give it a lot of attention. Perhaps we're not doing that. We need to do much. Perhaps maybe we need to do much more. But truth be told, look at the first match we lost to South Africa. That again, a sign that uh, we lost to them in um, Lagos, the Aisha Buhari Cup, back to back again under one year. Tell him that we're not telling things we didn't, do, we, didn't, we didn't do it properly, and that's where we need to up, up our game. Credit to the girls. I mean, uh, nine, they played nine against 11, it was crazy. And they kept it, but then you fight till the end. We gave our best, anyways. Football, it didn't work that way, but um, we need to do much more. That's the truth. In the case, it's over. Um, maybe if, if that's red card for Morocco, but then that's football for you. We should prepare for all this. I mean, it happens in North Africa. Um, Al Ali is still complaining to tomorrow about what happened against with that. We should know all this. All right. I agree with you. Uh, we should have been better uh, prepared. Uh, let, let me give you the floor to Austin. We don't really have much time. But um, emotions, I mean, running wild. Uh, at some point, at some point, I, I was asking questions. I mean, I could just highlighted the major incidents in this game. 
there was a time I thought a Moroccan should have gotten a red card if, if we're following the same application of the rules. Yeah. You know, and probably the outcome would have been this. But I don't know, maybe it's the Nigerian in me speaking. So let me yield the floor to Austin. Yeah, I think that the, the referee made errors that we see referees, you know, make uh, in football. And um, when you take a look at the turnout of spectators at the stadium, I think about 45,000 for women's football in Africa. First, that's a big plus. And maybe she was intimidated, you know. But then again, if you check the... Uh, the red cards given to uh, Alima Tainde and Rashida Dajibade, it would have been avoided, you know, particularly when you're playing against the host, playing in front of this massive crowd, you're playing for a ticket to the final. Morocco has never been to the finals. It's just, it was just so much in it. And this centre referee, maybe the pressure got to her. But yes, I agree with you. It's not just about being Nigerian. Uh, Morocco was also in the same situation and, and, and we didn't see a red card. So, it happens in football, but it doesn't take anything that it was a beautiful semi-final match. It was a good one for the development of women's football in Africa. And a testament that we need to invest more. You see, Morocco rolled out a long-term plan in 2020, a four-year plan, yes. and they injected so much money into women's football. They had two major objectives. They said they want to win the WAFCON and qualify for the World Cup. Are they not close? Yeah. Yeah. And it makes it more painful for me, just the way you landed it. It makes it more painful mm. for me. But it's a pill that we have to swallow. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Let, let me allow Joseph to say something uh, about this game. I mean, you know, everything has calmed down now. Uh, but then we will still go back to the administrators because in spite of everything I could just said, and I agree with everything I could just said, we should ask ourselves if we're doing enough. Even if we had won this tournament, can we all well, boldly say... Well, time is not normal, Yemi. I think I have uh, made this clear that uh, the Super Falcons, um, it's just a matter of time before um, other teams uh, catch up with them. And I think this started um, four, five, six years ago. And so I'm not surprised that this has happened uh, to the Super Falcons of Nigeria. Uh, but then going into this competition, I was listening to uh, as I said, the, the, the first uh, game, well, um, the way they played, one will want to ask questions if uh, this was the Super Falcons of Nigeria against uh, South Africa, knowing full of so much was our stake. If we call in 2018, the same um, um, stage, we lost to the South Africans, uh, got away with each in, with the title rather in the final after winning VAR penalties in that one. So uh, other African teams, as I said, or as I've been saying, are catching up with us. But then going back to this tournament and going back to what we saw yesterday, uh, just as uh, the guest from Lagos said, I mean, we, we, we didn't take our chances. The first 45 minutes was ours. Only if we had taken those chances, we would have been in this situation. And of course, this competition, I agree or not, has been marred with bad officiating. I'm still wondering how the South Africans got that penalty against Zambia. I thank God the FA out there has uh, well, filed a complaint and... Um, CAF would definitely be reviewing that. So um, I'm still surprised how they got the penalty for the Super Falcons of Nigeria. Um, um, Yemi Austin, um, playing nine men for more than 40 minutes, give it to the girls, but then they played themselves. They should have seized the opportunity in the first 45 minutes. They got the red cards. The Moroccan, uh, Moroccan team started believing. They knew they can do it. Uh, they could rather do it. And that was what happened. So they got the result. I hope we go back to the drawing board and get this right. If we call at a point where we're drawn by Equatorial Guinea, we came back, re strategized and of course, uh, went on to uh, win more titles. I hope it will be uh, that case this time around. Nine times African champion. All eyes were on the Super Falcons. And of course, just as the guest again in Lagos said, we should have known there was so much at stake, knowing that other, all countries, in any way, we want to dethrone the Super Falcons. And before I go off saying, just to know, I just to let you know that all eyes are on the Super Falcons. You want to agree with me with the bias analysis you've got in from some of the guys in South Africa? Yeah. Uh... Mm. They would they would prefer other <laughs> other countries than Nigeria. All right, uh, that's a good place to leave it. Uh, Joseph Atewe, I want to thank you for your time on the show tonight. Hopefully, we'll get to do this some other time. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Okay, so um, we're pressed for time. Uh, really, let's see if we can uh, do this. Um,
quickly, uh, Kane Idris, where do we go from here? Quickly. For the Super Falcons? Yeah. Um, uh, one of the things I just want to, you know, clear the air, uh, you know, uh, about is the fact that when people say Africa is catching up with the Super Falcons, you can't win nine out of 11. Okay, now it will be nine out of 12. There will be bad days in the office. These are those competitions where we would lose. We can't win every day. So the Super Falcons are suffering something we call you are a victim of your own standards. Mm -hmm. So because of the standard they've set, whenever they don't win the AFCON, it feels like the entire Africa has caught up. Equatorial Guinea won two back in the days. Where is Equatorial Guinea today? After then, the Super Falcons has come to win several. South Africa or Morocco will win this one. But after then, I would ask you a question some six years from now. All right. So as far as KD is concerned, it's a bleep nothing to lose sleep over. Let's go on our final break. And of course, when uh, we return, uh, we'll be back to uh, wrap up after a few minutes. All right, welcome back. We're on the home stretch. We'll be discussing on uh, things happening in the world of sports, uh, Nigeria Professional Football League, and we're currently on the Wafkan Women's African Cup of Nations. All right, we still have Aikoji Ojekere uh, with us. And um, before we let you go, let me just uh, throw this, uh, make it your parting shot uh, on the show. So, uh, Aikoji, do you think this is a blip? Or is something we should really be worried about? To an extent, I agree with KD that you can't win all the time. So days like this will happen. But is this something to worry about or is it just a blip? And what should we do if we have yeah, to be um, before I, worry? I agree. You can't, you, can't, um, you, you can't win all the time. But um, if you've lost to South Africa twice, then you have to think about uh, uh, you realize that something has gone wrong. I mean, one in Lagos, um, it was a mistake. OK. One again in uh, Morocco, then that's not a mistake. Uh, and uh, so we need to go back, and uh, the drawing board is already filled up. But then we need to go and have a rethink. Um, what, what we, 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 we set a standard. I mean, are we, are we stepping away from that standard and leaving the state for others to take control? We must own it and, uh, and show that we, 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 we are in control of um, all this. Then, but the truth is, we're not, we're not doing as much as we should do. Um, uh, the rest of Africa are catching up with us. Uh, they are doing their own work. We are not doing. Like I said earlier on, uh, back in the days, we beat Morocco like 8-0 anywhere um, in South Africa. And, and, uh, and uh, look at what has happened this time around. It means simply means that um, you look at it again, um, team selection, what should money give up? Uh, uh, some high believe should have, should, should have played more games. You know, you look at our performance, even when we were playing nine against 11 yesterday. Imagine she was on the field when we were playing 11 11. Um, again, it's back for us to think properly and um, um, the federation and uh, those, the, the um, end of play as well. This end season, uh, the women's play, but then a lot still to be done. All right. A lot still to be done. I, I Kojo Jekere, uh, CEO of Matchroom Sports and Media Limited, I want to thank you for your time on the show and hopefully you'll grace us with your presence when next we call on you. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure. All right. As our friend I J, uh, of course, giving us his thoughts on recent happenings in the world of sports. And of course, uh, my partner, Austin Okonaman, is still very much around. Uh, Austin, we could be tempted if we want to continue with the ladies, but uh, we have something else to talk about. And of course, I'll allow you to do the honors as we prepare to wrap up on the show. Football, yeah, I mean, you know, and each time we talk about amputee football we love it because um it, it highlights the power of sports you know when you talk about special sports special athletes and right here channels television we promote them because we love what they do and we believe that that's one way to promote inclusion so nigeria getting ready uh for uh, a lot of amputee competition and the coach is saying look we need to do more for the development of amputee football so let's listen to coach Madwafo, talk about the development of amputee football. I tell you, when you see these guys, when, you, when you're around them, you feel the power of sports. You get inspired. You hear their stories. You get motivated. And I think this is where we can actually, you know, do a lot in investing, in supporting these guys and developing an amputee football in Nigeria. Let's listen to Coach Madwafo right back. 
who expect a great turnaround. Um, I think um, Team Football has suffered over the years. We've done our best, possible best to give our sponsorship to create a better federation and put team. But I think the people that have been managing it have not done their best, and the players have actually made their choice. The choice of the players and the divine mandate. And I promise the players that we will do our best to make empty football be where they are supposed to be. Even before the Mexico 2018 World Cup, I started the campaign to take them to the World Cup. I did every, everything possible, not as a board member, okay, but as a supporter. I did road shows, I did photo shoots, I did media tour. But along the line, they sidelined me. I actually left without any uh, bad mind, okay? I lost so much money, but now I've, I've seen that it's, it was a seed I sold. The players turned around and said that, yes, two, uh, four years down the line, that they want me to be in the hem of a face. So that's it. Uh, it was highlighting some of the things that we need to do to support amputee football. And um, Kende Idris, I totally agree because, um, I mean, where else should we should we put put in money if if we can't put it into this sort of venture that that can touch lives? I, I think he had, um, he had he had touched on you know the spots you should you know touch on when you're asking for you know assistance or partnership uh, assistance. Out there in Europe, so many of the clubs um, for like two three years now consciously started. Every team, Arsenal, Manchester United, Barcelona, everybody must have an amputee or special person's football team. That is, whatever the regular guys get, they also get inclusion, motivation, welfareism, and all of that, which helps a lot. Now, they used to have so many who come around, watch games, and all of that, or uh, kind of liability to the society, the immediate society of those clubs. Right now, so many of those guys are very, you know, uh, useful because they are uh, breadwinners, you know, being part of the team and all of that. And that is where we should go. Uh, making it a conscious effort uh, where, uh, you know, start from each community, each society, everybody should yeah. have something where they are developing these guys. And then if you ever, ever had time to go and watch them, uh, you know, do their thing, especially their training, mm -hmm. I'm sure you want to dole out everything you have to just support them. All right. I guess uh, that's a good place to let it land on the show uh, tonight. Uh, of course, we have to wrap things up uh, because we are out of time. But first, I want to say a very big thank you to Aikoje Ojekere uh, for gracing us uh, his presence. Joseph Atewa was with us earlier as well. And Kende Idris, we also want to thank you for your time today. Hopefully, it's good to be here. Yeah, hopefully we'll do this again next week. Of course, week. of course we will. Uh, that's the promise of live TV. <laughs> All right, that's the show today. We do hope that you enjoyed everything we were able to bring uh, to you. We'll be back here again tomorrow to take you on a trip across the money spinning, exciting, rewarding, fast-paced world of sports. From the city of Lagos, right here in Nigeria, I'm Yemi Adebayo. Bye-bye now. To our darling Super Falcons, we just want to say we love you girls. You showed us how to fight for the country. Keep your head up. Go to the World Cup and make Africa proud. That's the show. In London, I'm Austin Okonapan. In everything you do, remember, let's keep talking sports. Bye for now.